Welcome everybody back to Not Like Receptors. This is your host, John. Okay, for those who watched the lectures on the TLR uh, receptors, recall that those are primarily surveying the extracellular environment, although there were some few exceptions. But these not like receptors, these are primarily cytoplasmic. Again, there are some few exceptions. Now, the not like receptors and the TLR receptors, they both belong to the PRR family, the pattern recognition receptor family. And they're detecting PAMPs and DAMPs. Remember, receptors are recepting something, right? They got, they're detecting patterns that are not our patterns, okay? And also things like endotoxins and stuff like that, uh, the release from um, these pathogens. Now, these NOLIC receptors can be broken down to two groups. The NLRP, P for pyrene, or NLRC, C for caspase. Now, within these two groups, there's multiple receptors, but we're not going to talk about all of them. We will be focusing on NLRP3. We'll be mention NLRC4 and NOD2. And the reason being is because most of these receptors are not very well known. They're very highly complex, and we're still, still learning about them right now. Now, even the ones that we do know about, there's still uh, some pretty good gaps in our understanding. Now, if we're going to talk about these receptors, as we did with the TLRs, we might want to ask, what are they sensing, right? What are they detecting that leads them to, uh, you know, essentially initiate the uh, infl inflammation and the innate immune system? So, like NOD1 and NOD2 will take, for example, that senses miramil dipeptide, peptoglycans, on the gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria, along with DAP. Now, the NOD1 and NOD2 are kind of different in the sense that their signaling molecule is called RIP2, and the way I remember that is rest in peace, right? Um, because, of course, all these are leading to, to death of pathogens and inflammation. So RIP2. Now, NLRP1, that senses things like anthrax, right, the bacterial toxin. But this utilizes something different. This utilizes the ASC caspase 1 signaling molecule, and that's what we'll be discussing today. And that's the main player in, like, for example, our next one, which is NLRP3. NLRP3 senses bacterial toxins, peptoglycans, things from like listeria and staphylococcus. Now, NLRC4, this will sense things like the bacterial flagellin and the salmonella, legionella. And again, this is utilizing the ASC capsase 1 signaling molecule. Now, we're about to talk about inflammasomes. And it's, we should say that it's the gnaw-like receptors that are part of the pyrene uh, family that are forming these inflammasomes. So like NLRP3, P4, P6, P12, these are forming our inflammasomes. Now, you might be asking, what is an inflammasome? Well, essentially, if you have a gnaw-like receptor and it's been activated, what happens is an activated gnaw-like receptor will soon join and bind to another gnaw-like receptor and more and more, forming a complex. And these complexes will, are responsible for activating things like interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 18. And interleukin 18 itself will then lead to type 1 interferon production, which will lead also to TNF activation. And all those combined will lead to the activation and the attraction of macrophages and neutrophils. But what this complex will also do is lead to the cell death, an inflammatory cell death called pyroptosis. Now, pyroptosis is a little bit different than apoptosis, but nevertheless, it's a cell death. Now, this NLRP3 family that we're talking about, it was very interesting is that it can also be activated by the like a major efflux of potassium from the cell. And this is usually due to microbial toxins that forming these poor forming toxins that allow fluxes of potassium to leave. And sensing that efflux of potassium, it will form an inflammasome, which is very interesting. And the really specifics of how that all occurs, we, we do not. We really don't know. Now, we also should be asking, let's look at some other things that activate these uh, receptors and in, in these inflammasomes to signal. So a list of these activators would be like LPS, extracellular ATP, miramil dipeptide, toxins, bacterial 
viral DNA, asbestos, and more. Now, remember the goal of these pathogens is to really to kill, uh, or the receptors is to kill the pathogens uh, by secondary mediators and then attracting these immune cells. Now, we need, need to mention that these receptors are very strong regulators of inflammation and immunity. And they do help the innate immune system, especially in the response to pathogens like H. pylori and listeria. But re and the thing is, like, not like two receptor, that's expressed in the intestines, which then stimulates the expression of defensins, which is nice for us. But also that these not like receptors can do a lot of harm. So not two polymorphism is linked to Crohn's disease, while the mutations of NOD2 can lead to massive systemic inflammation. In fact, they're also linked to a, to a string of major diseases, such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, MS, atherosclerosis, gout, and more. In fact, some are even linked to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now, improper activation of, of these can also lead to a, a release of interleukin-1, and this results in fever and inflammation, and actually will lead to a syndrome known as CAPS syndrome, C-A-P-S syndrome. So they can do a lot of damage. And there's a lot of other syndromes they can do uh, cause as well. So now let's look at the restructure of these receptors and look at kind of when they form or how they form an inflammasome. Now these receptors, these TLR, they have a, if you'll notice that the, the receptor I, I drew, it has, looks like a candy cane. Those pink kind of stripes, those are the leucine rich repeat region, the LRR region, okay? Now below that, you have the notch region, the N-A-T-C-H region. And then below that, you have the nod region, and then you have the PYD, which is the pyrene domain region. Now, the, what's important is this actually the nod region. And the reason that that's important is because that region is responsible or, for allowing these nod-like receptors to oligomerize, which means to, to assemble, to self-assembly, to, to attach to each other so they can form these inflammasomes. Now, in regards to the NLRP3, when it's activated, it will soon start binding to other NLRP3s at the nod region, forming a complex, okay, the inflammasome. But so here you have the NLRP3, it's activated. That NLRP3, that nod-like receptor, will soon bind to an adapter protein, which is also known as the ASC, okay, which is a pyrene and a card domain. And together, it's known as the, the adapter protein complex, so the pyrene and the card domain. This will then attach to a pro-cap space 1. And then all together, so you have the NOL-like receptor, which attaches to the adapter protein, which is comprised of a pyrene and a card domain. And then you have the pro caspase 1, which will bind to that. And all that together will create our inflammasome. Okay, and we'll have multiple of these created to make an inflammasome. Now, once the inflammasome is created, it's going to activate actually caspase 1, which will then turn lead to pyroptosis, right, cell death, and mature interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 18, and we've mentioned other ones. Uh, as far as TNF and type 1 interferons, all leading to the activation of macrophages, neutrophils, and inflammation. Okay, everybody, that is it for today. I hope that helps. We appreciate everything. Take care.